There are many reasons why pursuing knowledge is a good thing. I've heard it said that some scientists have commented that the more that they come to know about the universe, the more they realise they don't know about the universe. So one of the benefits of, of growing in knowledge is that it, it can uncover for us more of the immensity of God. It, it, it humbles us before God's greatness as we recognise how uh, little we really do know, how great God, how immense God really is. But we only have to look through our history, even our recent history, to know that knowledge is not always used for good and proper purposes. Knowledge is also often used instead for gaining power and control and dominating others. That's also true with religious knowledge. A number of times we see in the Gospels Jesus is battling with the teachers of the law, those who have the knowledge or, or, or the religious leaders because they were using their knowledge of God's law for their own gain, for power, for control. And, and this, of course, defeated the whole purpose of God's law, which was to draw people closer to God, to humble themselves before the greatness of God, was to draw people together. But instead, God's law was being used as, as something that was divisive. It was dividing God's people. That was drawing people away from God. The most tragic uh, uh, outcome of that way of relating and using the law is that it, it, it created a certain way of relating with God. Following God, following God's law, became all about knowing the right things and doing the right things. Salvation was all about performance. It was all about performing for God, knowing the law and doing it, managing our behaviour according to the letter of the law. This kind of way of of following God, it, it created uh, this idea that God treats us according to our behaviour. So in this, this old way of relating to God's law, um, the idea is that the better that we behave, the more that God accepts us. It was a kind of self-salvation. We, we would earn our way to God. Now, St Paul's picking up on this uh, tension uh, in, in this, the old way of relating to God's law. Uh, it wasn't, not everyone, of course, related to God's law in this way, but it, it was certainly uh, significant enough to, for Paul to really pick it up and, and challenge it. And he, his point really is that we can never perform our way to God. Never doesn't matter how much we know. It doesn't matter how good we may be. We can never perform our way to God. If that's our view of what it means to follow God, that to, to know certain things and to follow certain ways, certain laws, then we're always going to be frustrated because we can never, ever meet God's standards. We can never perfectly follow God's law. Either that or we just live in denial. <laughs> we think that we are, we're not. <laughs> so Paul's point today is that even though the Old Testament law was good and it was holy and it was used for God's purposes, his point now is that with the new covenant, with the coming of Jesus, we now have a new way of, of understanding God's law and a new way of interpreting it, and a new way of following and, and benefiting from God's law. And he says, this new way is, I mean, you can't even compare it. The old way has no comparison to this new way, which of course is the way of the Spirit, 
the way of grace, the way of Jesus. He says the way that we follow God's law now is not by knowing all the right things and doing all the right things. The way that we know God's law and follow it is in and through our relationship with Jesus, which is possible because of the power of God's spirit. That's what Jesus is saying today in the gospel. I have come not to abolish the law, but to complete them. Jesus is saying, I am the ultimate authority of the law. If you want to know God's law, if you want to follow it, it can only happen in relationship with me. I will reveal the law to you. I will make it possible for you to follow the law by my spirit, by my grace, not by your efforts and your works, not by your performance. Now, this shifts so much for us. There's so much we could talk about, but there's just one particular um, difference this makes in the way that we relate to God that, that I wanted to pick up on today. And that is that if we now interpret the law through Jesus, it means that our, the way that we relate to God is, has got nothing really to do with our performance. We, we can't earn our way to God. But through Jesus, we come to recognise that God has already accepted us. God already loves us. God already has adopted us into his family. He's already made us his sons and daughters. We don't have to perform our way there. We're already there. We're already in it. We're already in God's life. We're his sons and daughters. He already sees us as right and good and holy. We're already enough for God. Now, of course, we need to grow in that identity that God's given us, but we're already enough in this new way of interpreting the law because Jesus has made us enough. That's the whole point. It's a gift. It's not something that we can earn. That's why St. Paul's saying you can't compare the old with the new. (laughs) In the new, Jesus has, has come to help us to realize we're already loved and accepted we're already in the family we're already good and holy now this might sound nice but in reality it can be quite challenging it can be difficult for us to accept that we are already accepted by God it it can be really difficult because it means we have to be really humble and just allow ourselves to receive the gift, to acknowledge that we didn't make it happen ourselves. We can't make it happen ourselves. It, it can be much easier for us to, to uh, follow that old way of interpreting the law, you know, following the written letter, doing the right things. It gives us more of a sense of control. You know, okay, I've done that, I've done that, tick that box, tick that, okay, I'm all good. Yep, I've got this under control. But... Interpreting the law, following the law through relationship with Jesus, in some ways can be, can be much more difficult because it means that we need to constantly be living with this humble recognition that we can't save ourselves, that we need Jesus. It means that we have to keep our hearts open and keep looking to Jesus. It, it means being open and obedient to God constantly as he leads us and helps us to live out his law of love as he as he instructs us in and through our relationship with him not just as we follow words and tick boxes it's you see it's it's a dynamic uh, reality living out God's law it happens in relationship with Jesus if we want to do it in this new way it means embracing our lack of control and just surrendering to God's love and to the lordship of jesus so what lens do you look through as you walk with god for you is it about knowing the right things performing the right way ticking the boxes sort of you know uh 
behaving your way to God and to, and to, to, to God's blessings and God's life? Is salvation something you earn? Or do you see your salvation, your walk with God as a pure gift? Do you recognise that God already sees you as precious, as his son and his daughter? He already sees you as good and enough. But of course, he wants to help you to, to step into that identity and grow in it. To become more and more who he's created you to be. Now, what does this look like practically? Well, very simply, I want to suggest it means if we want to really um, follow the law in through relationship with Jesus, if, if we want him to be the interpreter of the law for us, it means that we need to look to Jesus. I mean, every day we, we need to be asking for Jesus to send his spirit uh, to give us the wisdom and to give us the heart to, to know and to follow his law of love today, however he's calling us to do that. It'll be different for all of us. But we'll only discover it in and through the relationship.